as you can see, I'm in the middle of my kitchen remodel, getting ready to buy appliances, and my appliance repairman, Pistol, agreed to talk appliances with me. <laughs> he came to fix my dryer, and he had so much information, I said, I have to have you on the show, because appliances are a huge investment. I mean, huge investment. I think we're getting ready to spend somewhere around $5,000 on appliances, which just... I can't believe, <laughs> but that's what they're running now. And so he is going to tell us which appliances to buy. Now you were saying it kind of goes by what, like refrigerators, you should get one kind and, and stoves, another, another brand. So we're going to run through, let's start with refrigerators. Is that a good one to start that's with? Fine. Okay. Yeah. Which refrigerators should you buy? All right. So the two main brands that are going to be the best for customer service and for availability of parts are both kind of American. You have the Whirlpool line, which involves your entry level stuff like <clears throat> um, Admiral and Roper on the on the Whirlpool side. On the Maytag side is a Mana, and then you have your middle line of Whirlpool and Maytag, and then your top end is KitchenAid and Gen Air. I'm always a big fan of Gen Air, but um, you can't go wrong with a Whirlpool. At okay. the same purchase level of as your Whirlpool and Maytag is going to be your Electrolux. Okay. Uh, most commonly, people know it as Frigidaire. And oh, they're the same? They are the same. Frigidaire oh, is owned by that? Electrolux. Okay. And you've also got, um, I believe it was Philips and... Gibson White Westinghouse is an old, more Eastern name. You know, mm -hmm. we don't see it here regionally too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tappan, if you remember an old mm -hmm. Tappan oven mm -hmm. or range from back yeah. in the day. And Tappan stuff is oh, still okay. available regionally. We just don't see it here. Now, do you think it's worth going? Is the price jump, because I looked at KitchenAid. <laughs> is, the price, is the price jump from a Whirlpool Maytag to KitchenAid to, was it Gen Air KitchenAid? Gen Air, yeah. Is the price jump, I mean, we're talking thousands, thousands of dollars, yes. like like tens of thousands of dollars. Is right. it really worth spending $2,000? Well, no, wait a minute. Let me say that the other way. Is it worth spending $10,000 on a KitchenAid versus $2,000 on a Whirlpool? No, it's not. Because okay. once again, you're getting into more electronics, more options to break down. Okay. Uh, I still just recommend the middle of the line. You know, okay. If if your budget says go with the entry level, then by all means, you're going to get the, an entry level device. Uh -huh. um, your refrigeration from a Mana or from Roper is going to be right there. Okay. Um, just not maybe as pretty. They're not going to offer your black stainless like yeah. everybody wants now. Yeah. You're not going to get a French door in okay. one of those, but you will get a refrigerator and it'll be reliable. Okay. All so right. So for refrigeration. Um, the Electrolux Frigidaire Whirlpool and, and Maytag is okay. going to be about it. Or the Amanas, you know, there's a lot of Amana fridges around here. Okay, so those are the brands to stick with for refrigerator. For refrigerator. Let's go to the stove next. <laughs> or the range. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's basically three options. And we have the gas, the electric, mm -hmm. or inductive and then oh, we yeah. have the dual fuels mm -hmm. so kind of four but okay. i i just clumped the electric and the inductive because you're, it's the same plug-in mm -hmm. a little different to work on um i don't know what's going to happen with all this gas yeah. stuff that's going on <laughs> i saw that i was there, like are you kidding there are so me? many buildings where people live that they will never get a 220 volt circuit in to run electric yeah uh, it's a mess yeah however uh, for ease of cooking, a gas is always gonna, you know, get you through. Is there a brand if, that's particularly good for gas? Um, I'm still, still a big fan of the Electrolux Frigidaire gas ranges okay. for for uh, price range. You know, for the for the average person that's kind of biting their nails on a budget, um, that's going to be your your um middle of the line okay price wise okay there have been some whirlpool stuff that i've been a little bit bummed out with for for gas ranges just you know a little electrical problems mm -hmm. a gas range shouldn't have all these electrical issues mm -hmm. but they do um 
as far as inductive, it's not even American where I like it. If you're running an inductive range or cooktop, it's probably more like Mila or something for, okay. you know, they're safe, they're fast. I do like inductive, but then once again, you've got that huge price jump again. Yeah. So your, your affordability of a gas range is going to be uh, con okay. considerably lower okay. than the other ones. And what about electric ranges then? That's electric what I'm ranges. For. <laughs> well, the uh, are you on a glass top? Or, yeah. Oh, okay. I love my glass top. Do you? Okay. Yeah, well, and, do, and but... that's where the inductive ranges really make my heart thump because they're you still get the glass top, but it's as quick as gas. Really. Um, hmm. It's nice, but once again, you know, you're going to spend uh, maybe. 2000 on a on a very nice electric range and mm -hmm. you will spend another thousand over that for an inductive okay. so if you're wanting just a glass top just a regular old glass top yeah, electric absolutely. range absolutely yeah you can go with the who with would a you whirlpool. do with whirlpool yeah absolutely okay. i've i i i hardly ever work on okay. them to be honest oh good yeah they're uh now, do the, a, does it matter with the front um, knobs versus the back knobs for repairs or breakdowns or anything like that? You know, I have worked on more of the front knob okay. controls. The backsplash, they have a directed vent where the heat from the oven oh, is going. Oh, yeah. And your controls are kind of blanketed from those. Oh, okay. There's a lot of built-in item, uh, like a wall oven, mm -hmm. that people will leave the door open and it burns a thermal fuse up in the controls right there. Oh, wow. So you, okay. you uh, have, once again, the high-end stuff with your bells and whistles, you have touch screens on some of these ranges mm -hmm. now. And the heat comes right up from the oven and... Fries them. Oh, yeah, it shoots them right in the brain. Yeah. Okay. And so I... I I prefer the backsplash style. It's a little bit more to clean up. Um, of course, it gives you a place to set your salt and pepper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Just make a little shelf, you right. know? <laughs> okay. All um, right. And I, I don't like ones that have the controls in the cooktop because yeah. you you have like an electric uh, gas with an yeah. electric igniter. You turn the knob here, you boil something over, it yeah. goes right into the knob. We and had that happen. We had that happen in this house. We first moved in. Mike had pulled off the knobs because it because we had something spill. Was cleaning it up. We heard a loud pop, and it shorted igniter module the top. <laughs> and we had that happen here. Yeah. So I yeah. told I would not get anything with knobs on the top at all. Yeah. That was awful. I would just run from those. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. Dishwashers. What's a good brand of dishwasher to buy? Okay, so <clears throat> the Electroluxes seem a little bit cheap. I, I do like the Whirlpools. Okay. Um, there's still the ever so reliable Bosch dishwasher. Oh, yeah. I loved my Bosch. Uh, when, uh, yeah. I loved my Bosch. They're a little bit harder to work on if you have to work on them. But so quiet, so quiet, so, so smooth. Quiet. You always get the performance. Yeah. Um, there is some Bosch made Kenmore, you know, so you okay. can get a little bit of the sticker shock taken away by going with the How Bosch. How do you know if you're getting a Kenmore Bosch dishwasher? My favorite question if you go on appliance411.com, okay, so just the number 411, yep. like we used to dial. Mm -hmm. You can find a subtitle there or a, a, a submenu uh -huh. that is Kenmore, who made what, with a question mark on it. Oh, and it okay. actually gives you, I can show you on my bookmark here, how much does a refrigerator cost? What's this? Um, in my mobile bookmarks, I keep this Appliance 411 on hand. There it is right there. So it gives you the... Oh, sure enough. First three digits available okay. in any. Yeah. I don't know if you can see Here, that on there. Hold or not. it up. So, can Just you see a, how it's got the first digits right there? So, I'll take a screenshot of that and add it also. But, right on. that's. There's those Daiwoos. So, that's really easy way to tell if you're getting a Kenmore that's made by Bosch. Wow. So, on this model one, so the model easy. number is 119, according to this right now. 
Okay. For a, uh, for a. Uh, oh, for a range. Right. Oh, not the dishwasher. Range okay. Range countertop. So here's your, or cooktop. Okay. Top. Your 630 would be your Bosch dishwasher. Oh, okay. So you look at the model number, you see 630 okay. point whatever. And then you'll know. Your, yeah. Okay. So, so if you Bosch. can't get a Kenmore slash Bosch, <laughs> what would be your next one? Oh, boy. I absolutely love the ultra simplistic Mila dishwasher. Oh. Mila I've never heard of that one. Yeah, well, Mila is an Italian company. They're almost considered a luxury line on some stuff. Um, they, I believe, hold the record for the world's safest induction cooktop right now. Yeah. Have for a couple of years. Hmm. The Mila dishwasher itself, though, is almost simplistic to a sin. Um, okay. They, they have one little weak point on them that you can reach in and remove the chip of a cup if you break a glass mm -hmm. and they go back on working again. There's really mm. very little to go wrong with them. Okay. I see catastrophic failures on like KitchenAids mm -hmm. and uh, the Electrolux Frigidaire dishwashers are kind of cheap or cheesy. Okay. The GE and, and uh, cafe dishwashers, they never perform. Okay, what about They're Whirlpool? Noisy. There's some Whirlpools that are good. You know, I, I discourage a uh, plastic tub on any dishwasher. Okay. Uh, most of your frigidaires are gonna be a plastic tub. You can get stainless steel or, ca or uh, plastic on your Whirlpools. You can get a, a fairly quiet, um, affordable, you know, $800 or less. Yeah. Um, you can find a, a Bosch in that category. You mm -hmm. can go all the way up to $1,500 for a Bosch for the uh, Crystal Dries. Okay. Which, that, that's kind of another category in what we're wanting to do by. So, we're looking at government cracking down harder and harder on the consumption of, of uh, water. water and electricity on our appliances. Yeah. and. Bosch is way ahead of that curve with the crystal dry dishwasher. Okay. It is, um, it has no heater. They use a, a, a different process to heat it up. They're guaranteeing better dried plastic at the end of the cycle. Hmm. Uh, it also comes with a price tag. You know, I haven't seen for one less than $1,300. Uh, which although I'm telling you I would pay 1300 bucks for a Bosch dishwasher it yeah, was it's really worth it nice. you know and if it you was. if you want to go really overboard high end Bosch is now Thermador so oh, okay. you're you can go even more expensive than that when you wow. go put the Thermador label okay. on Mila isn't going to be like that you know 900 for a Mila okay. and you know, you, you have a paper towel and a pair of pliers. You can service the whole thing. They're, they're <laughs> okay. sweetly simplistic. Okay. If that's it beeps, you work on it. If it doesn't, it runs. Okay. So, well, that's good to know. Okay. Like the Let's hit microwaves. microwaves. What microwaves should you buy? What's a good brand of microwave? So microwaves are a funky category because they're kind of like automotive batteries and automotive brake fluid. There's only like two or three manufacturers. Okay. Um, Panasonic is probably my more favorite. Oh. Um, Freestanding. Mm -hmm. I don't like built-in microwaves okay. or over-the-range microwaves. Yeah. There's cooling issues on the built-in ones, and obviously you're you're running into filth from the mm -hmm. range. And the humidity. And humidity, and... temperature, mm -hmm. you know, heat issues as well on an over the range. We replaced our last house, I think, I think we replaced the microwave over the range four or five times mm -hmm. in 10 years. Right. It was and ridiculous. It, you know, if you're using like sesame seed oil mm -hmm. for cooking uh, habitually, I see all the plastics in the microwave just turn to dust. They oh just, my. they kind of junk out on you. Okay. So the, the Panasonic with inverter turbo defrost or whatever they call it, uh, I have found to be the nicest, um, lowest maintenance okay. uh, microwave out there. Um, obviously, if you have a, a pull handle versus a push button, a little bit of moving parts it might be a deciding factor. Um, there's, I believe LG is actually 
the maker of most of the magnetrons that you find in these units today. Okay. So where I go with it is if you spend $300 for a microwave, regardless mm -hmm. of brand, and it stops heating, you are spending $350 for the magnetron. Oh, if so there's you might only, as well just get a new microwave. Yes. Okay. So there's no sense in getting a fancy mm -hmm. built-in. Um, you know, you could get an alcove that is oversized in your cupboard to set a microwave on, even have it on a sliding platform so you can bring it out and clean it easier or mm. throw it away. Mm -hmm. um, the simpler, the better when it comes to microwaves. I'm getting a free a freestanding this time. I'm yeah. not doing the over the range Absolutely. again. But so Panasonic would be a good one to, I like the to Panasonic, stick with. Yeah. Okay. Is there um, a second that's good or just just Panasonic? You know, I've one? I've seen good reliability and low service um, in the field on the Frigidaire. Okay. Um. I I work on all of them. Usually it's for a microwave. Okay. If I go in and I find just, disposable. just yeah, if I find that it's a bad mic magnetron, we won't even entertain the idea unless it's some exotic built-in that they can't get a new one to fit the yeah. hole. Um, there's a, a a transformer and a capacitor, so a power changer and a power store. Well, uh, and, and you know the over the over the range microwaves. People don't realize there's a lot when those break, like when you're putting the new one in and you drop it on your glass top stove. My neighbor did that at our old house and they were replacing it and they dropped it. So not only did they have to replace the microwave, they had to replace the stove because the microwave slipped and crushed their glass top. And so I just, I think over, I know everybody's got those, but it's like, you know, I just stay, I'm, not doing that again. It was just such a pain. All right, washer and dryer. What's the best washer and dryer brand that you could buy? So we talked about uh, front loader versus top loader. Yep, so I you like want a front, front loader. loader. Yep. Okay. Um, sadly, there is, my, my preferred dryer is not in that sort of sleek look. Oh, okay. So secondly, for, for matched set of mm -hmm. washer and dryer, I do like the LGs. Okay. Um, the LG washing machine is a great little workhorse. It is one of those gems where they manufactured a unit that just did it. And they haven't changed it for a long time because it just did it. it. Yeah. Okay. And they That's have good to know. come around with their programming just a little bit. And you see the action that it does on the, on the clothes while they're washing and how they... They concentrate water and detergent back over the clothes and they move them around and they're really getting good friction. Mm. The LGs do a great job. Okay. The dryer that sits next to them is also a good dryer. They're a little harder to work on, so we kind of cuss okay. them a little bit, but they're they're a good little dryer as well. Okay. Second would be um, probably a Whirlpool okay. front load washing machine. Once okay. again, you can't beat the customer service. Um, something happens years out of warranty that's a mechanical failure, they're going to help you out. Whirlpool oh. will take care of you years down the road. Oh, that's good to know. Um, the original dryer from Whirlpool, when it was backsplash style with mm -hmm. the top load machine, is that old dryer that has the long lint trap that pulls yeah. out of the top. Yeah. From the <laughs> I have one there. of those. Okay. Yeah. That is still your most reliable dryer design ever built. Oh, okay. And they're very simplistic, um, ultra cheap to repair and rebuild. Um, okay. You know, what I had for quite a while was a 29-inch uh, GE front loader and the backsplash style okay. Whirlpool dryer hidden in my basement. And I, I've still got the front load um washer from mm -hmm. LG and I've got the dryer to match it now just because okay. that was ready and it was the size that I needed. Yeah. Um I I kind of shy away from the the Frigidaire Electrolux laundry, although uh there is one option available now through the Electrolux washing machines that I do like on a front load, you can reverse the door. 
as oh. where it was always just reversing the dryer door in the past. Oh yeah. Um, there's okay. I've run into many situations where that is incredibly helpful to people if My they can reverse house, the yep. washer door instead. I had that problem. The door opened. I mean, I was standing. Here was the wall, and the door opened in my face, and I literally had this much space. So I had to duck down oh. to put my clothes in my shirt. <laughs> was, I know it was awful. That's why I'm talking to you because I'm like, I do not want to go through this again. Right. Now, I would say the moral of the story, though, is, and we hear this all the time, I want matching appliances. You don't need to have the matching name brand. Right. Just get a matching color. Right. But don't let the name brand... I mean, it sounds like maybe Whirlpool across the board seems to be fairly reliable for Fair most enough. things. So I guess if you want to go for Whirlpool, but don't just let the brand name exactly. get you sucked into buying all the appliances. Buy, buy what's going to actually work and keep working. Right. Is what it sounds like you're saying, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, if it's a stackable design, um, you can stack an LG dryer on a Maytag washing machine. Oh, okay. You can, you can put a, um, uh, a Whirlpool dryer on top of uh, an LG washing machine. Okay. They, they are interchangeable. You just need the proper stacking kit that goes for those for okay. that washing machine. Mm -hmm. And then you put the dryer on it. Oh, okay. Uh, they oh, all have different stacking kits and yeah. it, it can be confusing, but you can mix and match if they're... Okay. If you're going for white laundry, you can buy a white Maytag washer mm -hmm. and a white um, LG dryer, you okay. know, however it works out. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. You know now what to buy for all of your appliances. Please go watch this video next on what not to buy for appliances. Visit us at livingonadime.com and we will see you guys next time. We are giving you maintenance tips on to keep your appliances going and keep them from just breaking down in general. Um, people don't realize they're doing everyday things and it's just breaking their, breaking their appliances. So we're gonna start with the stove first. Is that okay if That's we start fine. there? So what you were telling me about when people hire a cleaning company to come in and clean their houses, the cleaning company does this to their stove uh, panel and it ruins it. And what is that? That is using ammonia based cleaners, which Number is one, Windex. Windex. And it's I so didn't easy know that. on a microwave. You know? Oh my goodness. Uh, so using Windex to clean your appliances is really bad. Absolutely. So what does it do? Uh, usually you have these touch panels. Uh, most notable is your microwave control panel, but most of the ranges now have a touch panel for mm -hmm. at least a timer or setting yep. the oven temperature. Yep. They are layers of plastic in there that are glued together to make that uh, electroconductive mm -hmm. spot. And the ammonia gets between those layers and rips the, the adhesive apart, and then they short out. So I your Windex, you know, you're going along the front of a mm -hmm. of a range or across the front of a microwave and the door is fine. You know, you got glass there, mm -hmm. but then you have a touch panel and they need to be separate. Clean so how do you clean them? I just use soap and water when I clean all my appliances. That's all I use. I don't use any disinfectant, nothing. I just use, so after I do the dishes, I just take my soapy water and wipe down all of the, the appliances. But is that the best way to clean them or... Yeah, a soft, okay. damp rag, um, soap and water. I do always recommend a, a little bit of white distilled vinegar added in with water in a spray bottle. Okay. Uh, that's beneficial for hard water deposits. Okay. And I, you know, it usually does a little bit less streaky kind mm -hmm. of uh, speckly look than soap and water yeah. does sometimes. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Uh, the vinegar does have a mild disinfecting angle to mm -hmm. it. Um, peroxide does as well. You just want to kind of be careful with peroxide. Usually we just stick to the vinegar. What about rubbing alcohol? Would that work? Rubbing alcohol is a little bit rough sometimes on electronics. Okay. Just because it's a, it's a solvent mm -hmm. and you've got a, a water content. It can... Uh, open up a, a corridor, you know, mm -hmm. through something that has an adhesive and possibly you'll get water in there. Yeah. 
Um, there are angles that a rubbing alcohol is fine for. I don't discourage it. I just, mm -hmm. I like to, you know, keep a wary eye on some uses of it.